Welcome back to AP Statistics. This is Dr. Kling, still not affiliated with the College Board. And today I want to bring introduce the notion of a confidence interval. Now you remember when, last time we were talking about sampling distributions. And so we pretended that we know the mean, we know the standard deviation, and we want to know something about an X bar. In particular, what's let's say there if, is there a 90% chance that given a sample size n is there let's say a 90% chance that x bar will fall between mu equals plus sorry, between mu minus m and mu plus m. So there'll be some number m. So we'll have mu minus m, mu plus m. And m you can think of as kind of a margin of error. So that's kind of the margin of error of our sample. Um, and we can find that by knowing that z is equal to um, x bar which is uh, x bar is now going to be mu minus m or mu mi plus m minus mu over sigma over the square root of n or is it simply equal to m over sigma over square root of n or another way to put this is that the margin of error, once we know what the, once we choose this level, let's say 90%, we could choose 95, we could choose 99, that will give us what we would call a z star. And so the margin of error is equal to z star sigma over the square root of n. And this is really the important formula in doing a confidence interval. Margin of error is z star sigma over the square root of n. Okay, z star comes from the inv norm of 1 minus c over 2, where c is this confidence level. confidence level. So if C, for example, if C equals 90, then we would take the inv norm, we call that 0.90, and we take the inv norm of 1 minus 0.90 over 2, which would be 0.05. Because 1 minus 0.90 is 10, and then we get the 5%. So that gives us our z star. We know sigma, and we're either solving for n or we're given, if we're given n, then we can solve for m. So let's say we're given a sample size, we're given a target for z star that's based on the confidence level. And we, are no, we assume we know the standard deviation. That'll give us this margin of error for our sample relative to for our sample relative to the true mean. Okay, so that's from a calculation standpoint. That's that's how we calculate a margin of error for a confidence interval. So we say the confidence interval. I'll, I'll put C I for confidence interval is equal to, and I'm going to write right now, x bar plus or minus the margin of error, and the margin of error again comes from this equation. Okay, that's all fine, but you notice what I did here, I kind of pulled a fast one. I put the confidence interval around the x bar when our sampling was around the mu. Okay, so now we've snuck in 
the case, remember with the sampling distribution originally, when, when I talked about sampling distributions, I said we assume we know mu and sigma, and we're curious about what the distribution will be for x bar. And now we're going to say we know sigma, we fi find x bar, but we don't know mu. So you think, well, maybe we'll make a probability statement about mu. Maybe a confidence interval, if we say that there's a, let's say that x bar is uh, 3.5, Let's say our confidence level equals 90%. And let's say that our, we find the margin of error is 1.0. Then you might think, well, let's, let's say that mu is therefore equal to 3.5 plus or minus 1.0. But that's wrong because we're not going to make probability statements about mu. So that's not the way we describe the confidence interval. We, we, we will say that we have a confidence interval. Our confidence interval is 3.5 plus or minus 1.0. But the way we put it in words is as follows. Dif different people word it differently, but the way I like to word it is this. Okay, so mu, remember mu is what it is. And we make probability statements about our statistics, about our sample statistics. And so the way I phrase the confidence interval is as follows. It says, if the true mu were outside our confidence interval, that is, we're outside in this hypothetical example, outside 3.5 plus or minus 1, that it was, so it was either to be outside, it would have to be less than 2.5, or greater than 4.5. If the true mu were outside the confidence interval, then the chance of observing our sample x bar, which in this case is 3.5 in our hypothetical example, so the chance of observing our sample x bar would be less than, and now I bring back our confidence level, would be, sorry, would be less than 10%. Or to put it in positive terms, uh, well, maybe not quite positive terms, if the true mu were outside the confidence interval, the chances are 90% or more that we would not have observed our x bar. So we're making a probability statement about our x bar. Uh, that's the way I look at confidence intervals. You'll also see people talk about uh, we think we'll get something similar in repeated samples or something like this, but I think this is really the most rigorous way to describe a confidence interval. You make a probability statement about getting your sample results if the true mean we're, ha we're outside the confidence interval. So in some sense you're, um, you're saying that it's unlikely that you have observed your, the sample results you, reserve, you observed if the true mean were outside the confidence interval. And I think I'll leave it at that.